Hey, I'm Matt from MasterSketchup.com, and in this video, I'm gonna share 10 tips for using materials in SketchUp. So I actually have an article where I share, well, actually, start over. Tip number one, where to find good materials. So I have a article that I'm gonna to link to that has a bunch of websites uh, where you can find free materials. But uh, the first tip is actually going to be how to extract materials from the 3D warehouse. So if you go to window, 3D warehouse, you can actually um, extract individual materials from uh, models in the 3D warehouse. So let's say we like this one. When you're viewing a model, if you click on this button right here for materials, you can actually download just individual materials that you want. You don't have to download the entire model. So I'll download this one here, and it now appears in my in-model collection so I can use it in the model. Now tip number two is being creative in how you search for materials on the 3D warehouse. So if you are looking for different wood materials, I would type in wood materials, and what you'll find are a bunch, I would probably click the, the models uh, category here, but what you'll see is there's a bunch of materials that people have uploaded that kind of look like this. It's kind of a grid um, that has a bunch of materials. And so if you click see more details, you can go to the model page, you can browse all of the individual materials, but if you wanted to download the entire collection here, you could just download it into the model and instantly your in-model collection will populate with all of these materials that you uh, imported. So you can just delete this and all of these materials will still stay inside the in-model collection. Now, what if you wanted to save all of these materials uh, to use on a different project. So that's tip number three, and which is how to save in-model uh, materials to a collection. So first you have to make sure you're on the in-model collection. Um, so either click this house icon or find it in the drop-down menu. Then you wanna click this details button. And of course it's gonna fly out to the side. So you click this details button and select uh, save collection as. And that's going to allow you to save this collection. So by default, it's going to show you the folder location that you have configured in your preferences. And so if you save them here, what'll happen is since that folder is, is already uh, configured in the preferences, which by the way, I can show you that if you go to Window, Preferences, Files, this folder right here, uh, whenever you open SketchUp, it's, SketchUp will automatically search this folder for any materials. And uh, what it'll do is add those materials to a collection at the bottom of the list here. So this is how you can save all of the materials from a specific model to a collection and make it so you can use these materials in other models. All right, tip number four is helping you understand what the in-model collection really is. Now, I wanna mention I do have a very in-depth guide on how collections work. I really recommend you check this out. I've got a video on uh, really understanding how collections work and the in-model collection as well. But to briefly, um, kind of demonstrate, let me create a new file. And, and so currently the in-model collection is empty. Now what happens is when you add, let me just create a cube here, when you add uh, any sort of uh, material to your model, so all of these collections here are like the default materials. So anytime I grab one of these materials and apply it to the model. I'm gonna switch over to the in-model panel so you can see what happens. So as soon as I add that to the model, a copy of that material is placed 
inside the in-model collection. So what that means is it's embedded in the model. It's no longer uh, referencing that local material file that's saved on your computer. It's created an, an entire separate copy and embedded that in the model. Now, why is that so important to understand? Well, it's because when you edit that material, you're only editing the in-model copy. So if we go back to the colors list, this color isn't uh, affected at all. So the, an analogy I like to use is like uh, thinking about painting a picture, right? You have bottles of paint and that you would consider to be like, you know, the collection of materials that you have on your computer. Well, when you, um, you know, add paint to your palette, to paint from, that's your in-model collection. Now, if you mix the paints together and change the colors of the paints that are on your palette, it doesn't affect the paint that's in the bottle, um, obviously. So this is kind of the same thing. So your in-model materials are what get changed when you're editing materials. All right, tip number five is three different ways to create uh, texture images and the first thing is you can actually drag images directly into SketchUp. I don't know if you knew that or not, but it's a, kind of a quick way to bring an image right into your model. And if you wanna use this as a texture, uh, you can either right click and use as material that will add it to your in-model collection uh, from which you can then sample from. Uh, the other thing you can do is just explode the image if you wanted to convert the image to a rectangle with the material already applied. The second way to create a new texture is to go to File, Import, and select an image and make sure Use Image As is uh, Texture. And then you go Import and you need to apply it actually directly to a face. So let me get a, a face there texture import. And the cool thing about this is it kind of lets you scale it in, in as you're inserting it. And once you've, once you've inserted it, it adds it to your in model collection. And the third way is kind of the obvious click create material, uh, select the, uh, the image from this button and that will create your new, uh, your new material. Hey, um, it's Matt as I'm editing the video and just realized I must not have been recording for tip number, uh, was it six and seven? So I'm gonna show you right now, but we're gonna do it a lot faster because I'm already clocked out at like 15 minutes here. Okay, so tip number six, how do you scale an image that you've inserted? You just grab the tape measure tool, you measure a known dimension, so it says eight foot four, so you type in eight foot four, enter. It asks if you wanna resale, resize the model. You click yes, you're good to go. But what if you have other things in your model? So let me undo that. Let's say we have a couple of things here that we don't wanna resize. How do you do that? Because that's gonna resize the entire model. So the trick is to put it into a group. So a shortcut would be control X to cut it, Right click, make group, shift V to paste. Uh, I think that's a default shortcut. If not, it's right there in the edit menu. So that inserts it into a group. And then you just do the same thing in here, inside the group, eight foot four, enter. And now it's asking if you wanna resize the active group or component. So it's not gonna do anything to the things that are outside of the component. And tip number seven, is you can change the color of textures. So let's say you find a tile or carpet or whatever that you like, but you just wanna tweak the color just a little bit. You just go to edit, you can change the color however you'd like. And if you notice uh, these artifacts, you can just click this colorize checkbox and that takes care of it for you. Now, if you get really out of whack, and you just wanna reset it, there's a reset button right here, so you're good to go. All right, let's get back to the video. And tip number eight, I'm gonna show you how to take an image like this of a building that's shown, or an office building that's shown at an angle here, and how to get it to fit uh, a model uh, perfectly, so how to skew it perfectly to fit the, the model. 
So what you'll do is you start by applying the texture to the face. Then you're gonna right click, go to texture, position, and typically you'll see these pins right here, the red, blue, yellow, and green. So the red one will anchor it and the green one will, will scale it up. But what we actually need to do is right click and uh, uncheck the fixed pins option. So you see these white pins and you're gonna do a single click. So that lifts the pin and then you're gonna go find the corner and you're gonna repeat that for every corner of the building. And then once the pins are located properly uh, on each corner of the building, you just drag the pins to the corner of the face that you're trying to align it to. And then you just click once outside to finish uh, positioning the texture. Moving on to tip nine is how do you solve this issue where you have um, multiple uh, groups or multiple faces that um, you want them to appear as if they're one continuous surface. So I actually have, I have, you know, the, the first floor is in its own group. And then we have a floor object here, I believe. And then we have the second floor above that. So how do you get these materials to align so that uh, it appears to be a continuous surface? So first of all, you might notice that I have hidden the edges. Um, so if I turn on hidden geometry, you'll see this edge here is already hidden. So that's the first step that you want to do. So right here, hide on hide. You can also just right click it to hide it. And then the second thing is you want to sample uh, one of the materials. So you, you apply the material directly to the face and then you hold down Alt to sample it. And then when I back out and jump inside of this group, actually, let me show the rest of the model here. So when I show the rest of this group, I'm going to apply that material and you notice how it jogged over a little bit. So now when I jump back out, you can see that this is now aligned. So if I do that again to the, the, the face that's up here, so I'm just gonna apply that and see how it jogged over. So now if I turn uh, hidden geometry off again, now it looks like one continuous, one continuous surface, even though it's actually broken up into many different groups and components. All right, let me show you that one more time with a simpler example. So I have two groups here and you'll notice that this course is kind of cut short because they're in two separate groups and the materials just didn't align properly. So the first thing, again, double click uh, and hide this edge. A little shortcut is to use the eraser tool and hold down shift. If you click and drag and actually if, let me hide that, let me hide that, uh, that other group temporarily. So hold down shift, click and drag. So that hides that edge. And then I'm gonna do the same thing up here. Eraser tool, shift, click, drag, that hides that edge. And now you can really see how the materials don't align properly. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump inside of this group, grab the paint bucket tool, hold down alt to sample that, that texture. Uh, it doesn't have to be selected, that was just by accident. And then I'm gonna go into this group, grab the paint bucket tool, and since the since we just sampled that first one, SketchUp still remembers the positioning and orientation of that texture. So now if I click a second time, nothing happens because I'm an idiot. Hmm. Okay, well, I think maybe what will fix this is if I uh, set a new position. So I'm gonna re-anchor this down at the bottom. So we have the course starting right at the bottom. And so now this is kind of like a new position. So now when I sample this, it's gonna know it's a new position. And when I apply it, now we get that, that shift and everything works okay. So hopefully, hopefully, that, uh, hopefully I didn't lose you there. We still have one more tip. All right, so tip number 10 is how to project materials onto 
like a complex surface. And you'll also notice here that textures can have opacity. If you use a PNG for your texture, uh, it'll actually show the opacity. So um, if I turn textures off, you can see the shape of the, the actual uh, model. So I have a little bump out here. And when I enable the textures, um, it kind of shows the illusion of, of how that works. All right, so here's the setup on how you pull that off. So you wanna have a rectangle uh, sized to the same size as the object you're gonna be projecting the texture onto. And then you grab your texture, you apply it to that face, and then you're gonna have to go ahead and uh, make sure that it's set to projected. So that's the key. And we do wanna reposition this just so it's going to look, uh, look right when we, when we apply it. And so once it is set up like that, you can select the faces you want to um, have the image, or to, you select the faces that you want the material to be projected onto, and then use the paint bucket tool, hold down Alt to sample it, and then click to apply it. All right, that is the 10 tips I wanted to share with you on uh, materials. So again, check out the links I have in the description below to learn more about collections and to find uh, websites where you can get free textures. Now, one thing I didn't cover in this video that I'm thinking about covering is how to create your own seamless tileable textures. Um, so that's something I might do in the future. Let me know in the comments below if that's something you wanna do. All right, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.